Hi there, my name is Caroline Strawson and I'm a multi-award winning EMDR and rapid transformational therapist specialising in trauma. Now you've been sent this video by a loved one, your friend or family member, because they believe that they are the victims of narcissistic abuse. Now narcissist is an overused word in our society and I get it. We hear everybody's ex now is a narcissist. And actually by saying that really, really harms those of us who have been true victims of narcissistic abuse. Now narcissistic personality disorder is a cluster B personality disorder that is actually listed in the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And it's what the American Psychological Association use to diagnose personality disorders. However, the problem with narcissistic personality disorder is this relies on the individual recognizing that they have a problem, going and seeing somebody and getting a diagnosis, which very, very rarely, if ever happens with a narcissist. Now the person who has sent you this video believes that they have been the victim of narcissistic abuse. Now narcissistic abuse is one of the most insidious forms of psychological abuse. And what makes it really, really difficult for the victims is to the outside world, the person that they are saying this about may look like a pillar of the community. They may look friendly and nice, or maybe even acting like the victim themselves. And this makes it really difficult. And the reason why I know this is because this was me. 10 years ago when I went through my divorce, I was a shell of myself. I was literally broken. And when I was in therapy, I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder. I was suffering with depression, anxiety, and self-harm. I had a huge amount of debt, culminating in having my family home repossessed. And it got really bad, really low. I felt nobody understood what I was going through because to the outside world, he looked like the most friendly person on earth, but behind closed doors, there was control, there was manipulation. It was leaving me wondering what was real, what wasn't. And actually, I was losing myself. And we call this gaslighting. You may have heard this term mentioned in the media before about being gaslit. And what gaslighting is, is someone saying something to you and you starting to question yourself, is it me? My gut is telling me that's not real, but my partner, my husband, my wife, they're looking me in the eye and saying something else. So you start to question yourself and the brain needs reasons for things. So you start to find a reason, maybe they don't mean that. Maybe they're tired, maybe it's me, maybe I'm the crazy one and you are left broken. So the person who has sent you this video believes that they have been the victims of narcissistic abuse. And I know that you want to help them. I know that you love them. But very often what happens is you might start to feel frustrated at them. Why aren't they just moving on? Why aren't they just getting over this? Would you say that to a child who had been the victim of child abuse? Because they will have had brain changes that had gone on. They would have a real feeling of low self-worth exactly the same as somebody who has been through narcissistic abuse. There are physiological changes that happen in the brain. Just because the person who has sent you this video isn't walking around with a broken nose and black eyes doesn't mean that they've not been the victim of abuse. And psychological abuse, in my opinion, is far worse because you can't see the scars, yet they are deep. We have a part of the brain called our limbic system and in that we have an amygdala and a hippocampus and these have changed. The amygdala has got bigger because probably you've noticed the person who sent you this video is just seems angry all the time or on edge or feels like they're just going into themselves and maybe they don't answer the phone or speak to you because they really, really go into a freeze trauma response and go into themselves or maybe they're getting really angry and they just want to run away. Well, that is the flight, fight or flight trauma response. Because remember, the brain's job is just to keep that person safe. And if that person didn't feel safe in that relationship because of the abuse, they are still in that fight, flight or freeze trauma response, desperately trying to cope. And all they are focusing on is survival right now literally getting through that day. Now I know you want to help them. I know you want to see them recover from this because to you, it just looks like a breakup, maybe a divorce, but to them, they've been abused. To them, that they have been rocked to the very soul of their core. They feel shamed, they feel guilty, they feel not believed, they feel not validated, they feel not worthy and not good enough. All of these things every single day. They are not waking up every single morning thinking, ah, oh, I want to feel like this. They don't want to feel like that. 
but they are struggling because there have been changes. Now, the good news is all of these changes can be reversed because, again, they weren't born like that. But it takes intention and it takes time. So whilst they need that time to start to heal and recover from narcissistic abuse, there's a couple of things that I know will help you support this person. So the first thing is holding space for them. Holding space, allowing them to speak to you with no judgment. Now, I know it's going to be really hard not to offer advice at this stage. But remember, the more advice you offer that they don't follow through with, the more they are going to feel not worthy, ashamed and guilty and weak. But they're not. They are not weak. They are not shamed. They shouldn't feel guilty because they are healing. They have been the victims of abuse. Like I say, just because they haven't got black eyes or a broken nose does not mean that they've not been victims here. So I want you to just hold space for them and also maybe say to them, they can have five or 10 minutes to offload and speak and you will just listen and allow them to say all of that. And then you can say, I believe you, I validate you. Now let's do this and then talk about something else. So they can start rewiring new neural pathways in to recognize that they are safe right now. Because in trauma, people feel unsafe. They're back in that relationship. They're back in that danger zone. They're back not feeling good enough. And they need to see that right now in the present, there's not a lion about to eat them, that they are safe. Even if it's tough, maybe with money or children or anything like that. But it can make it really, really difficult if they feel you don't believe them. Because we know that narcissists will look a certain way to the public, and yet behind closed doors, it is very, very different. And I want you to know that the person you see talking and sharing this with you was not who I was 10 years ago. You would not have recognized me. That is why I'm really passionate about doing this video for the person who has sent it for you, because I was them. I was them, and I know what it was like. So please, please so that you can help them heal and thrive after narcissistic abuse.